Varys, who sent you here? I don't know who that is. Is he like me? Vampire, yes. That's complicated. And I'm not totally sure if I can trust you. But if you want to know the whole story, help me get back to my family's home. My family used to live on an island to the west of Solitude. I would guess they still do. By the way, my name is Serana. Good to meet you. Your guess is as good as mine. This place looks pretty different from when I was locked away. Yes, it is. And it's mine. It's... complicated. I can't really talk about it. I'm sorry. It's on an island near Solitude. Hopefully we can find a boat to take us there. It's my family home. Not the most welcoming place, but depending on who's around, I'll be safe there. Let's just say that my mother and father had a bit of a falling out. Don't worry, I'm not in any danger or anything like that. It'll just be more unpleasant to run into my father. I'd rather not get into that with you, if that's all right. I'm sorry, it's not that... It's just that I don't know who I can trust yet. Let's get to my home, and I'll have a better sense of where we all stand. Good question. Hard to say. I... I can't really tell. I feel like it was a long time. Who is Skyrim's High King? I don't know that name. You say she's Jarl of Solitude? Who supports her? Empire? What... what empire? Cyrodiil is the seat of an empire? I must have been gone longer than I thought. Definitely longer than we planned. Please, let's hurry. I need to get home so I can figure out what's happened. Please, let's hurry. I need to get home so I can figure out what's happened. Yeah, actually. Why are you doing this for me? Going through all this trouble to bring me back home. Really? So, there is something else. Well, perhaps I am. Or, perhaps I'm not. Anyway, enough of that. Come on, let's move. Let's pass here. Wait, Serana? Is that truly you? I cannot believe my eyes. My lord, everyone! Serana has returned! I guess I'm expected. I can't believe it!
My long lost daughter returns oh. at last. Hi. I trust you have my Elder Scroll. After all these years, Why that's me? the first thing you ask me. Yes, I have the scroll. Of course, he I'm has delighted the to see you, my daughter. Must I really say the words aloud? Ah, if only your traitor mother were here. I would let her watch this reunion before putting her head on a spike. Now tell me, who is this stranger you have brought into our hall? This is my savior, the one who freed me. For my daughter's safe return, you have my gratitude. Tell me, what is your name? I am Harkon, Lord of this court. By now, my daughter would have told you what we are. Not just vampires. We are among the oldest and most powerful vampires in Skyrim. For centuries we lived here, far from the cares of the world. All that ended when my wife betrayed me and stole away that which I valued most. You have done me a great service, and now you must be rewarded. There is but one gift I can give that is equal in value to the Elder Scroll and my daughter. I offer you my blood. Take it and you will walk as a lion among sheep. Men will tremble at your approach and you will never fear death again. Then you will be prey, like all mortals. I will spare your life this once, but you will be banished from this hall. Perhaps you still need convincing. Behold the power! This is the power that I offer. Now, make your choice. So be it. You are prey, like all mortals. I banish you. This vampire showed up while you were away. I'm guessing it's the one you found in Dim Hollow Crypt. Says it's got something really important to say to you. So let's hear it. You probably weren't expecting to see me again. I'd rather not be here either, but I needed to talk to you. It's important, so please just listen. Before your friend here loses his patience. It's... Well, it's about me, and the Elder Scroll that was buried with me. The reason I was down there, and why I had the Elder Scroll. It all comes back to my father. I'm guessing you figured this part out already, but my father's not exactly a good person. Even by vampire standards. He wasn't always like that, though. There was... a turn. He stumbled onto this obscure prophecy and just kind of lost himself in it. It's pointless and vague, like all prophecies. The part he latched onto said that vampires would no longer need to fear the sun. That's what he's after. He wants to control the sun. Have vampires control the world. Anyway, my mother and I didn't feel like inviting a war with all of Tamriel, so we tried to stop him. That's why I was sealed away with a scroll. I did, but something about you makes me think I can trust you. I hope I'm not wrong.
Well, let's move then. I'm nothing if not persuasive. All right, you've heard what it has to say. Now tell me, is there any reason I shouldn't kill this blood-sucking fiend right now? Why? Because of that story about the prophecy about some vampire trying to put the sun out? Do you actually believe any of that? Who knows? Maybe it has a death wish. Maybe it's just insane. I don't really care. It can stay for now. But if it so much as lays a finger on anyone here, I'll hold you responsible. Got it? You hear me? Don't feel like a guest, because you're not. You're a resource. Really? You're an asset. In the meantime, don't make me regret my sudden outburst of tolerance and generosity. Because if you do, your friend here is going to pay for it. Thank you for your kindness. I'll remember it the next time I'm feeling hungry. So, in case you didn't notice the giant thing on my back, I have the Elder Scroll with me. Whatever it says, it will have something that can help us stop my father. But, of course, neither of us can read it. Well, the Moth Priests are the only ones I've heard of who can do it. They spend years preparing before they start reading, though. Not that it helps us anyway, because they're all half a continent away, in Cyrodiil. Some Imperial scholar arrived in Skyrim a few days ago. I was staking out the road when I saw him pass by. Maybe that's your moth priest. Do you know where he's staying now? No, and I'm not going to waste men looking. We're fighting a war against your kind, and I intend to win it. You want to find him? Try talking to anyone who'd meet a traveler. Innkeepers and carriage drivers in the big cities, maybe. But you're on your own. Any idea how you're going to find a... Any idea how you're going to find a moth priest? Skyrim's a pretty big place. Well, back before I... You know. The College of Winterhold was the first place I'd think to go for any kind of magic or historical thing. The wizards know about all kinds of things that people probably shouldn't know about. Actually, now that I think of it, I'm going to come along with you. I've been really wanting to get out and explore a bit. I mean, as much as anyone. Not a lot. You'd figure a couple hundred years locked away with one would have given me some insight, but no. Turns out you don't learn much from just sleeping with something. Not at this rate, no. Nothing like a goose chase around the whole damned province. The tale of the great moth priest hunt. Not something I'd want to read. Oh, I... I see. Let's, uh... Let's just keep going. Nothing like a goose chase around the whole damned province. Here we are. Yes. The welcome I received felt really cold. Even by vampire standards. My father. After all these years, that's the first thing he asks me. I trust you have the scroll. Yes, I have the scroll, gods. Thanks. Sorry, I've just got some emotional baggage on my back. 
I didn't live in a particularly normal family. Yeah, let's move. I'm glad you're here with me. The tale of the great moth priest hunt. Not something I'd want to read. I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Thanks for checking in. So, what's on your mind? About... <clears throat> yeah, actually. I definitely didn't expect there to be a war of succession while I was gone. Also, I never expected a Cyrodiilic Empire to conquer Tamriel. That Tiber Septum. Even the Remens didn't achieve godhood. But, what do you think of all this? Oh, I see. Well... If it's worth anything, I do agree with you. Somewhat, at least. Worshipping Talos isn't my thing. What now? That's... a long story. I guess... We kind of have to go way back, to the very beginning. Do you know where vampirism came from? Exactly. The first vampire came from Molag Bal. She... was not a willing subject, but she was still the first. Molag Bal is a powerful Daedric Lord, and his will is made reality. For those willing to subjugate themselves, he will still bestow the gift, but they must be powerful in their own right before earning his trust. The ceremony was... degrading. Let's not revisit that. But we all took part in it. Not really wholesome family activity, but I guess it's something you do when you give yourselves to a Daedric Lord. Well, you've met most of us. My father's not exactly the most stable, and eventually he drove my mother crazy with him. And it all ended with me being locked underground for who knows how long. It's definitely been a bad thing, on the whole. I will be. Just give me a little time. What's our next move? All right. I mean, there's a lot. But the first that comes to mind is the real Berenzia. It's quite drawn out, but it is still very interesting. There's none quite like it. It's a biography, but the material is... Let's say it's a bit... eccentric. It's not very often that you get to read about barbed penises. And I never have, until now at least. The events of the book supposedly took place years after I was locked up. Back home, the castle certainly hasn't aged well. But at least someone's been updating our family library. I think it might be better if you read it for yourself. That is, if reading about royal espionage, debauchery, and promiscuous sex is your thing. And I don't want to spoil too much, but... Tiber Septim got her pregnant. What did you need? Do you need something? Not that often, really. Being a daughter of Cold Harbor, I can go without blood longer than other vampires. 
That, and I can also rest to regain my energy. It doesn't fully satiate the appetite, but it staves off hunger for a while. So, don't worry. I won't go feral on you or anything just because I haven't had a daily meal. I also read stories. There was supposedly a vampire in Akavir which never fed in her entire... life? Or whatever you call it. And that vampire supposedly sided with humans, fighting against her own kind. Yeah, actually. Well, I'm here, if you need me. What's our next move? Do you need something? Not much. Because there isn't really anything to do when you live on an island. And yes, on rare occasions I did travel to Skyrim with my father. For, you know, the stuff he did as the head of Clan Volkihar. The typical things. Intimidation, scheming, bribery, blackmail, execution. And he did teach some of those things to me, so I guess I do have some other skills, if you could put it that way. But not hobbies by chance. I definitely didn't have the most normal childhood. I guess that's what you get for being a follower of Molog Ball. Though... Besides the typical gardening and reading, I also did sing quite a bit. Definitely not nearly the caliber of the Bard's College, but I think it's something. Tell you what, give me some time to warm up a bit on the side, and maybe I'll sing something for you. Oh? What is it? Do you need something? I do, actually. You may think it's kind of weird, but I enjoyed playing with the rats by our castle Undercroft. That became my own little hideout for a while, where I'd go when I just wanted some peace and quiet. It was also near the sea, even when I became a vampire. I still did enjoy the breeze and fresh air. Anything natural and calm, really. Just to get me away from all that was happening at home with my father. Usually when he was in a bad mood. Nothing like a goose chase around the whole damned province. Well, I do admire their fondness for the sea, as pirates, sailors, or adventurers of the open waters. I used to read stories, and great tales of Red Guard pirates, from the shores of Stros Mackay to the farthest reaches of the Abitian Sea. Especially the daring adventures of Jait Talonwood. He was a little childhood hero of mine. So what do you say? Would you like to sail the open seas in pursuit of fame and the rarest treasures? I was kind of just playing around, but I like your enthusiasm. Maybe we should set sail for the coasts of Hammerfell sometime. After we're done with everything here in Skyrim. So, what do you want to talk about? Hmm, it does feel kind of... normal, but that's from me, speaking as a vampire. Even as I'm undead, or however you put it, I still do feel like a normal person, mostly. I still breathe, feel, and sleep, except now I just have a great desire for blood, and the sun kind of irritates my skin. These symptoms are rather mild, though, not like other vampires who almost burn in the sunlight. So, I'm really just like you mortals in many ways. Hopefully that makes me more relatable. So, what's on your mind?
Yeah, actually. This might seem a bit heavy, but hear me out. What's your outlook on life? What gets you up every morning? That's great to hear. It gives me comfort that there are people like you out there, trying to do what you do. I'll be glad to help, if that's alright. The tale of the great moth priest hunt. Not something I'd want to read. What do you mean? Well... I guess it's because I never felt that kind of thing was for me. I was always expected to act a certain way, and was never really asked if that was what I truly wanted. I always knew I was meant for more, not like one of those girls who felt pretty and stood inside their castles all day. And then... Things started getting icy between my parents. That basically hit the nail on the head for me, at least for how I wanted to live. I saw neither of them as role models after that. Let's keep moving. It still feels kind of weird, waking up after thousands of years, even at this point. Just thinking about an empire in Cyrodiil, I definitely thought everything would end with the Remens. Let's go. Now that I think of it, I do. What brings you to Skyrim? I see. Well, if it's worth anything, I'd be glad to have you around. As my tour guide. Now, take me through my own homeland. Which I don't even know that well. My book knowledge is something, but not much. What's our next move? I have, actually. And if I wasn't an adventurer now, I would probably be running a shop or two. Maybe even a conglomerate, if the divines would permit. Ever since I was a child back on the island, I'd particularly be interested in the merchants that would come to our castle every now and then. Of course, these were weird merchants to say the least with peculiar and eccentric collections. These vendors make even Belathor look weird. My father was kind of into those things, though. I mean, it wasn't anything particularly weird for someone who fancied himself as vampire royalty. And who also was a staunch Daedra worshipper. Point is, there was just... something in how these men sold and marketed their products. Kind of made me interested in the whole shopkeeping thing. Weird shopkeeping things, but still. Nothing like a goose chase around the whole damned province. They used to call Windhelm the City of Kings. In my books, anyway. Going there and seeing it for myself, though, I'm kind of disappointed. I had expected it to be... bigger. The Dusk on Anvil Harbor. It's a song my mom used to sing to me back on the island. I hope you like it. Waves touch the coast Harbored in twilight's blue From dawn came the sunlight And with 
dusk it fades from our view calm embraces the sky while storms rage in our hearts for honor glory and love from anvil we do depart the fire lights the path and the salt it sprays in our eyes but warriors born of stone they are never afraid to die bells on the docks they cry out for the mortal day and winds sing the dirge for the words we never could say and sails fly out half mast in the color of evening's hue and tears break the silence for the children we almost knew when dawn kissed the ocean from the golden light came our birth and when dusk falls on the harbor to the golden shores we will return So, what's on your mind? I mean, as much as anyone. Not a lot. You'd figure a couple hundred years locked away with one would have given me some insight, but no. Alright. Let's go. Oh? What is it? You know that Imperial song, The Age of Oppression? That and the other one. The Age of Aggression, I think it was anyway. Ugh, oh wait, sorry. The Age of Aggression was for the Imperials, and the latter was for the Stormcloaks. I got them mixed up. Point is, they're basically the same song, but with different lyrics. Each basically propaganda for each side. If you sang the Imperial song with the Stormcloaks, you'd basically get a death sentence. And likewise, if you did a similar thing with the Imperials. I thought I'd make something which won't get anyone killed. My own little variant of this... divisive thing. Hopefully more inclusive. Barring the Thalmor. We drink to our youth, for the days come and gone. For the age of invasion is just about done. We'll drive out the Thalmor and restore what we own. With our blood and our steel, we will take back our home. Yeah? Down with the Thalmor, the bringers of chains. On the day of their death, we will drink and we'll sing. We're the children of Skyrim and we fight all our lives. And when Sovngarde beckons, every one of us dies. But this land is ours, and we'll see it wiped clean. Of the scourge that has sullied our hopes and our dreams. Let's keep moving. Do you need something? Sure. Which song? Okay. Yes? All right. <laughs> I, uh, I have, actually. I call it Old Stone Walls. It's relatively new. I haven't worked out the tune of it completely, but... It just sort of came to me a few nights back. It's about... Well, just listen. You'll see. Old stone walls Towering over the sea 
but a candlelight high up shining brightly all alone sitting in the bay window tear-stained eyes and the waves crash below old stone walls deep down in the dark Long lost hopes and secrets sealing my heart. But then you were there, reaching out your hand. And for just a moment, I was brought to life again. Old stone walls, I've seen so many now. Tales and stories and the joy of being dragged around Your smile so bright I could go blind But that's okay if you stay by my side Cold dripping leather the smell of rain You fast asleep as I study your face Old stone wall They don't hold me anymore I'm happy where I am In the grip of your arms Nothing like a goose chase around the whole damned province Me too. As a fellow Nord, what do you think of mead? Like it, hate it, couldn't bother? It seems like most of us can't go a single day without it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. Glad we're on the same page, then. I may have an extraordinarily high tolerance for alcohol, but that doesn't mean I don't like getting drunk. Or at least, trying to. Haven't succeeded, I think, ever, but that's a little life goal of mine. I've never been here before, until I met you at least. I'd read stories about the Solitude Windmill, but I didn't expect it to be that big. Well, everything's big here, actually. People don't call it the largest city in Skyrim without a reason. And also from the castle, you used to see just a bit of solitude from over the mountains. It's a different thing entirely to be here yourself. Everything's just so... majestic. I hope it all lasts. Every one of them. That's it? Come All right. Don't go away mad. What is it? I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Okay. Thanks for checking in. Come on, let's go home. Got it. Do you have a moment to talk? That moth priest, Dexia. He said we needed two other Elder Scrolls. I think I know where we can start looking. Half the people in your little crew would just as soon kill me as talk to me. That doesn't exactly make me want to open up. 
I got a warmer welcome from my father. Now that's saying something. You know, I've asked myself the same thing. I hoped that if he saw me, he might feel something again. But I guess I don't really factor in at this point. I don't even think he sees me as his daughter anymore. I'm just... a means to an end. We need to find my mother, Valerica. She'll definitely know where it is. And if we're lucky, she actually has it herself. The last time I saw her, she said that she'd go somewhere safe. Somewhere that my father would never search. Other than that, she wouldn't tell me anything. But the way she said it, someplace he would never search. It was cryptic, yet she called attention to it. Maybe. What I can't figure out is why she said it that way. Besides, I can't imagine a single place my father would avoid looking. And he's had all this time, too. Any ideas? Wait, that almost makes sense. There's a courtyard in the castle. I used to help pretend a garden there. All of the ingredients for our potions came from there. She used to say that my father couldn't stand the place. Too... peaceful. Oh, absolutely. But my mother's not a coward. That is... I don't think we'll actually trip over her there, but it's worth a look. True. But I know a way we can get to the courtyard without arousing suspicion. There's an unused inlet on the northern side of the island that was used by the previous owners to bring supplies into the castle. An old escape tunnel from the castle exits there. I think that's our way in. It's around the side of the castle. Let's move. Yes? What did you need? Dexian said something about that scroll. What was it? Something to do with dragons, I think. Maybe we should try asking at the College of Winterhold. Sounds like something they'd know about. It still feels kind of weird, waking up after thousands of years, even at this point. Just thinking about an empire in Cyrodiil, I definitely thought everything would end with the Remens. What now? Before my father became obsessed with a prophecy, my mother and I spent quite a bit of time together. She was very fond of her alchemical garden in the castle courtyard. She taught me quite a bit about cultivating quality regions. Like the best of friends, I would never hesitate to share anything with her. It was very sudden. It was almost like one day we were a normal family, and then the next... I didn't know who they were. I'd try to visit my mother in the garden, and she'd quickly shoo me away, saying she was much too busy. She had to be up to something in that garden. I'm hoping it's a clue that will tell us where she went. Half the people in your little crew would just as soon kill me as talk to me. I'll need you to help convince them. There's not a whole lot to tell. You've already seen my father's obsession. My mother's not a whole lot better, but you'll see that soon enough. My father... No, not really. 
I did spend a lot of time with my mother, but she saw me more like a protege than a daughter. What about you? What were your parents like? <clears throat> You're a good daughter. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just keep going. So far, I think. Thanks. That's very kind of you. Though, there is something else. Just wanted to say how grateful I am for all you've done for me so far. No one's ever been so genuine with me, at least in a while. I was lonely most of my childhood. My mother, at least for a time, was the only friend I really had. And then that prophecy came along. <sighs> I'm sorry. I... I just had to get that off my chest. Um... This is getting kind of awkward. I think I've suddenly felt an urge to feed on something. Gods, I am a terrible liar. Here goes. I... I like you. As a friend, and as a traveling companion. Stop it, you're not helping. Many books. I... I can't even... This is too much. I've... I've never been to a library this huge before. I mean, I haven't ever really been to a proper library. Ever. To think, all the countless books they have stored here. The decades. The eras of knowledge. The tales of stories of heroes of old. Fables. Legends. All sorts of narratives. I... Okay, Sarana, breathe. Just breathe. I know we have important things to do, but you don't think it would be a good idea if we'd relax here for a bit. Just browse what they have to offer. Just for a little bit, please? Yes! Now, what are you waiting for? Moth priests, saving the world, dragons and whatnot can wait. At least for now. I wonder how good these students actually are at the arcane arts. Because, from what I've seen, there's a lot more to be desired. Especially with Brelina. Ah, the College of Winterhold. I've read about this place, but never really been here myself. It's a bit... Underwhelming, to say the least. Everything just seems so... crumbly. Well, that's more for the main city, if you'd even call it that. But the college doesn't seem to be in the best shape either. It also doesn't help that most of the locals here despise the college. At least from what I've heard. The faculty and students here are just mages, though. They're not going to cause the end of the world or anything apocalyptic of the sort. Ugh. Sometimes other people really are just nonsensical. Like my father, mother, 
And basically everyone else who's tried to kill us up to this point. Yes. I knew my father used to go to Blackreach from time to time, but I didn't ever expect it to look like this. It's an entire underground ecosystem. There's probably nothing else like it in Tamriel. Back in my time, at least. There used to be a royal clan of vampires here. They were called the Grey Host. And from what my father used to say, they were quite a massive one at that. Basically, think Castle Volkihar, but underground. I don't think they're still around, though. Or if we'll even be able to find their old castle. Everything's been torn down. The whole place looks... well, dead. It's like we're the first to set foot here in centuries. This used to lead into the castle's great hall. It looks like my father had it sealed up. I used to walk through here after evening meals. It was beautiful once. This was my mother's garden. It... Do you know how beautiful something can be when it's tended by a master for hundreds of years? She would have hated to see it like this. Wait. Something's wrong with the moon dial here. Some of the crests are missing and the dial is askew. I didn't even know the crests could be removed. Maybe my mother's trying to tell us something. I'm telling you, there's something strange with the moon dial. If I had to guess, I'd say the moment Mother fled the castle, Father went on a rampage. Knowing him, anything at all that reminded him of her was just destroyed. It appears that way. I suppose he wanted to put the past behind him. Perhaps if he had spent more time with us, he would have recognized the beauty for himself. Well, as far as I'm aware, it's the only one in existence. The previous owners of the castle had a sundial in the courtyard, and obviously that didn't appeal to my mother. She persuaded an elven artisan to make some improvements. You can see the plates that show the phases of the moons, Masser and Secunda. And that's the thing. What's the point of a moon dial? I always wondered why she didn't just have the whole thing ripped out. But she loved it. I don't know. I guess it's like having a piece of art, if you're into that sort of thing. Hard to say. Maybe if we found the missing crests, we could figure it out. That's it? Alright. She had to be up to something in that garden. I'm hoping it's a clue that will tell us where she went. Oh, I... I see. Very clever, Mother. Very clever. My mother was meticulous about her research. If we can find her notes, there might be some hints in there. Possibly. I guess even a vampire mother is still a mother. There's a lot of feelings wrapped up in this old place, and I don't think you're quite ready for them. You've already seen my father's obsession. My mother's not a whole lot better, but you'll see that soon enough. I know that in my head, but I just can't help feeling bad about the way things are. 
Just leave me alone for a bit. Me too. That's it? All right. My fellow... traveling companion. Doesn't this courtyard look... nice? It's serene in a certain way, and uniquely beautiful. Like a certain... I... I don't know. Maybe. Well, actually, yeah. The garden didn't age well. No, I wasn't talking about you. Well, I was. Well, it's entirely possible. Now, enough of that. We got a job to do. There has to be something here that tells us where she's gone. My mother was meticulous about her research. If we can find her notes, there might be some hints in there. I had no idea her laboratory even existed. She had an alchemy set up in her drawing room, but nothing that even comes close to what's here. Looking at the equipment and materials, it looks like she was trying to advance her necromancy. I don't know. Certainly not longevity. Kind of a waste of time for a vampire. Not that I ever saw. My mother had a bit of a thing for magical constructs. Not... not what you're thinking. She just found them fascinating. All right. Any luck yet? You did? Let me see them. I only know what she told me. She had a theory about soul gems. That the souls inside of them don't just vanish when they're used. They end up in the soul cairn. The Soul Cairn is home to very powerful beings. Necromancers send them souls and receive powers of their own in return. My mother spent a lot of time trying to contact them directly, to travel to the Soul Cairn itself. That circle in the center of the room is definitely some type of portal. If I'm reading this right, there's a formula here that should give us safe passage into the Soul Cairn. A handful of soul gem shards, some finely ground bone meal, a good bit of purified void salts. Ah, oh, damn it. We're also going to need a sample of her blood, which, if we could get that, we wouldn't even be trying to do this in the first place. Hmm, not bad. We'd better hope that's good enough. Mistakes with these kind of portals can be... gruesome. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get started. Oh, definitely. Mother would have plenty of those materials in her laboratory. You just need to find them. Then the rest is up to me. Are you ready to go? I'm not entirely sure what this thing is going to do when I add my blood. Of course. What is it? I've been asking myself the same thing since we came back to the castle. She was so sure of what we did to my father. I couldn't help but go along with her. I never thought of the cost. Possibly. I guess even a vampire mother is still a mother. She worried about me. About all of us. 
But she wanted to get me as far away from my father as possible before he really went over the edge. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I just didn't expect anyone to care how I felt about her. Thank you. Are we ready then? All right, here goes. By the blood of my ancestors. She actually did it. Created a portal with a soul care. Incredible. Incredible. Simply incredible. The Soul Cairn is a tiny sliver of Oblivion, the realm of the Daedra. It's ruled by unseen beings known as the Ideal Masters. Honestly, I don't know. Necromancers are always interested in souls, though, so that probably has some kind of interest. Nobody really knows. As far as I've heard, no one's seen them and returned to Tamriel to tell about it. I've read stories. Stories about fools that manage to... communicate with them. You give the Ideal Masters souls, they give you powers to summon the undead. It's all very businesslike. Because most of the stories end with the Ideal Masters duping the Necromancers, who end up dead or wishing they were dead. Nothing else? All right. Are you all right? That looked painful. Now that I think about it, I should have expected that. Sorry. It's hard to describe. The Soul Cairn is... Well, hungry, for lack of a better word. It's trying to take your life essence as payment. There might be, but I don't think you're going to like it. Vampires aren't counted among the living. I could probably go through there without a problem. Not your first choice, I'd guess? Maybe. We could just pay the toll another way. It wants a soul, so we give it a soul. Yours. My mother taught me a trick or two. I could partially soul trap you and offer that gem to the Ideal Masters. It might be enough to satisfy them. It would make you a bit weaker when we travel through the Soul Cairn, but we might be able to fix that once we're inside. Maybe. I'm sorry. I wish I knew a better way, something that would be easier for you. Just know that whatever path you choose, I won't think any less of you. Sometimes things just have to be done. I know that better than anybody. Have you made up your mind? Are you sure? I'm willing to do it, but you need to think it through. You'll remain mortal, but you'll find yourself weakened within the Soul Cairn. I know this is difficult for you. I hope you trust me. I'd never do anything that could hurt you. Thank you. Let's not waste any more time then. I promise to make this as painless as possible. Hold still. Let's go. My mother must be waiting on the other side of that thing. Let's go. My mother must be waiting on the other side of that thing.
Just what my mother told me. I've also studied a little bit on my own, but there's not much. When something is trapped in a soul gem, and then the energy is used for powering an enchantment, the remnants are sent here. Well, I think it's specifically the black ones. I don't know if the soul cairn takes just any leftovers. Look at this place. Do you think anything would want to live here? The only things that can survive here are the ideal masters, the undead, and the souls themselves. Well, if you want to call that living. I don't think anyone's ever met the ideal masters. I'm not even sure anyone knows what they look like. They could be underground, flying above us. They might be the ground, I, I have no idea. Lots of theories. Some say they feed on them like I feed on blood. Others think they use them as payment to an even higher power, almost like a currency. A very strange currency. Whatever they're doing with them, they've been harvesting for millennia. No telling how many souls are trapped here. Look around you. There are some extremely powerful undead here. Even a necromancer as seasoned as my mother would be willing to spend years trying to gain access to them. Exactly. It's a lost art. Most necromancers just raise up whatever bodies are nearby. A simple trick, really. Child's play. But bringing something from the soul cairn gives you something much more powerful. Well, that's usually the trick. It's possible to do it through a simple portal. But to finalize the deal, you have to travel here yourself, and most of them never come back. No, but there's no way she would have left it in Tamriel. She wanted to get it as far away from my father as possible. I can't imagine a better place. Then we find out where she hid it, if she's still alive. Well as alive as she was before, or as now, or you know what I mean. Probably to avoid whatever my father would do to her if he could get his hands on her. Or maybe her plan was to come back, but she was stuck here. We won't know until we find her. Yes, I do. Don't tell anyone else, though. Sometime back when I was still... mortal, my parents ordered an entire keg of Altmer Golden Pear wine. And yes, I know my parents were... weird, but like any other Nord royalty, they did like their wine. Anyway, what I did next was probably the most stupid and one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. One afternoon, I snuck down into the cellar while everyone was asleep. And I thought, maybe I should have a quick swig of this. And the next thing I knew, I was laying flat on my belly with both my parents yelling at me. I supposedly finished the entire keg. Yes, it was. But getting hungover really isn't. Ugh, the smell here. Let's try to handle this quickly. Look at the sky. What kind of place is this? I'm sorry. Thank you. Come on, let's move. But, looks like we'll have to deal with the smell of decomposed rubber and rotting flesh while we're here. If she really is here, I wonder how my mother managed to deal with it. Being cheeky, are we? How do you manage to deal with it then? Actually, I don't think you do. I think you even like it, because frankly, I really don't smell anything like the Soul Cairn.
And for someone like you, you don't either. Though, honestly, I do smell a bit of body odor here and there. If it doesn't smell like snowberry perfume, then it's not from me. Well... <laughs> I think we should just both admit that we do have horrible body odor at times. And at least mine smells like a regular human body odor. Good thing it doesn't smell like rotten flesh. But hey, we... We're being awfully carefree right now, aren't we? I mean, for being stuck in a realm of oblivion without any guaranteed return. Oh well. At least, either way, I'm glad to be here with you. Ah, uh, no. Damn it. I'm starting to like you. Okay. You're growing on me. And what I said is true. Though, I definitely wouldn't want to end up here for eternity. We got a job to do. Let's find my mother and a way out of here. Mother? Mother! Maker, it can't be. Serana? Is it really you? I can't believe it! How do we get inside? We have to talk. Serana, what are you doing here? Where's your father? He doesn't know we're here. I don't have time to explain. I must have failed. Harkon's found a way to decipher the prophecy, hasn't he? No, you've got it all wrong. We're here to stop him. To make everything right. Wait a moment. You've brought a stranger here? Have you lost your mind? No, you don't... You. Come forward. I would speak with you. So how has it come to pass that a vampire hunter is in the company of my daughter? It pains me to think you'd travel with Serana under the guise of her protector in an effort to hunt me down. Coming from one who murders vampires as a trade, I find it hard to believe your intentions are noble. Serana has sacrificed everything to prevent Harkon from completing the prophecy. I would have expected her to explain that to you. You think I'd have the audacity to place my own daughter in that tomb for the protection of her Elder Scroll alone? The scrolls are merely a means to an end. The key to the tyranny of the sun is Serana herself. When I fled Castle Volcahar, I fled with two Elder Scrolls. The scroll I presume you found with Serana speaks of Ariel and his arcane weapon, Ariel's bow. The second scroll declares that the blood of Cold Harbor's daughter will blind the eye of the dragon. Like myself, Serana was a human once. We were devout followers of Lord Molig Ball. Tradition dictates the females be offered to Molig Ball on his summoning day. Few survive the ordeal. Those that do emerge as a pure-blooded vampire. We call such confluences the Daughters of Cold Harbor. It's what some call the domain of Molag Ball, his place in oblivion. It was expected of her, just as it was expected of me. Being selected as an offering to Molag Ball is an honor. She wouldn't have dared turn her back on that. Now you're beginning to see why I wanted to protect Serana and why I've kept the other Elder Scroll as far from her as possible. If Harkon obtained Ariel's bow, and Serana's blood was used to taint the weapon, the tyranny of the sun would be complete. In his eyes, she'd be dying for the good of all vampires. 
And how exactly do you plan on stopping him? If you believe that, then you're a bigger fool than I originally suspected. Don't you think I weighed that option before I enacted my plans? You care nothing for Serana, or our plight. Whether or not you've become one of us in order to survive the Soul Cairn, you're still a vampire hunter at heart. You're here because we're abominations in your mind. Evil creatures that need to be destroyed. Serana? This stranger aligns herself with those that would hunt you down and slay you like an animal. Yet I should entrust you to her. This stranger has done more for me in the brief time I've known her than you've done in centuries. How dare you! I gave up everything I cared about to protect you from that fanatic you call a father! Yes, he's a fanatic. He's... changed. But he's still my father. Why can't you understand how that makes me feel? Oh, Serana. If you only open your eyes... The moment your father discovers your role in the prophecy, that he needs your blood, you'll be in terrible danger. So to protect me, you decided to shut me away from everything I cared about. You never asked me if hiding me in that tomb was the best course of action. You just expected me to follow you blindly. Both of you were obsessed with your own paths. Your motivations might have been different, but in the end, I'm still just a pawn to you too. I want us to be a family again. But I don't know if we can ever have that. Maybe we don't deserve that kind of happiness. Maybe it isn't for us. But we have to stop him. Before he goes too far. And to do that, we need the Elder Scroll. I'm sorry, Serana. I didn't know. I didn't see. I've allowed my hatred of your father to estrange us for too long. Forgive me. If you want the Elder Scroll, it's yours. Your intentions are still somewhat unclear to me, but for Serana's sake, I'll assist you in any way that I can. Yes, I've kept it safely secured here ever since I was imprisoned. Fortunately, you're in a position to breach the barrier that surrounds these ruins. You need to locate the tallest of the rocky spires that surround these ruins. At their bases, the barrier's energy is being drawn from unfortunate souls that have been exiled here. Destroy the keepers that are tending them, and it should bring the barrier down. One more word of warning. There's a dragon that calls itself Dernevere roaming the cairn. Be wary of him. The Ideal Masters have charged him with overseeing the Keepers, and will undoubtedly intervene if you're perceived as a threat. As you've been traveling in the Soul Cairn, your body has become attuned to it. Let's just say, a tiny part of you rubbed off on it, and in its place, a bit of the soul cairn filled the void. You should find no difficulty using the portal any longer. Harkon's vision is a world plunged in eternal darkness, where the vampire can flourish, and never again fear the tyranny of the sun. What he fails to realize is how much attention would be called to our kind if the prophecy came to fruition. If eternal night fell, there are many who wouldn't stand for it. They would raise armies in attempts to return things to normal. The order of the day would be our destruction, until every last vampire was hunted down and eliminated. I do. It's how the vampire has survived for millennia, and the only way we can continue to survive in the future. When I entered the Soul Cairn, I had intended to strike a bargain with the Ideal Masters, the custodians of this place. I requested refuge in the Soul Cairn, and in exchange, I would provide the Ideal Masters the souls that they craved. If I had foreseen the value they placed on my own soul, I would never have come here. 
The Ideal Masters unleashed their Keepers, and sent them to destroy me. Fortunately, I was able to hold them at bay and retreat into these ruins. Unfortunately, yes. Since the Keepers weren't able to claim my soul, they had their minions construct a barrier that I'd never be able to breach. Time has very little meaning to me. Consequently, it has little meaning to the Ideal Masters as well. I suppose you could call this the ultimate waiting game. Each watching the other, to see which will give in. I know very little about them. They're mystic entities that lord over the Soul Cairn, controlling every aspect from its fabric to its appearance. Well, some necromancers believe they are the crystalline structures dotting the Soul Cairn. I believe there's more to it than that. I think they transcend what we perceive as a physical form. Perhaps they were once corporeal beings, but they've obviously reached a point where they no longer require a tangible presence. Conduits through which the Ideal Masters speak to their underlings and feed on their victims. The Ideal Masters' weakness is their insatiable hunger for pure souls. It's the reason for the Soul Cairn's existence, and the only leverage a Necromancer has when bargaining with them. The ability to summon powerful undead guardians, as one would conjure an Atronach or Daedra, However, the majority of necromancers that are foolish enough to enter into a bargain with the Ideal Masters wind up here as harvested souls. Be careful, and keep my daughter safe. I'll be keeping an eye on you, and I know you'll be doing the same with me. So, what's next for our adventures? Something more daring and risky? Or something more relaxed? Relieved, I think. All those things had been building for a while. You have no idea how long I wanted to say that to her. Look. I loved my father, but when he found that prophecy, that became his life. Everything else, even me and my mother, we just became clutter. I was close with my mother, but she just kept feeding me her opinions of him and eventually I started believing them. The moment we gave ourselves to Molik Ball, things got really icy between them. They were both drunk with power and pulling in different directions. And then he found that prophecy, and that was it. I was. Honestly, it took me up until now to figure out that my mother was really just as bad as he was. He was obsessed with power. She was obsessed with seeing him fail. It was just so toxic. Maybe I could have seen this coming. We could all be better off now. You don't know what it's like, coming from a family like that. Everything eventually tumbles down to you. Anyway, we should keep moving. Yes? Well, back before I... you know. The College of Winterhold was the first place I'd think to go for any kind of magic or historical thing. The wizards know about all kinds of things that people probably shouldn't know about. Soul trapping, summoning Daedra, messing with the mortal realm, or even creating love potions. 
And no, I do not consent to any potion or mind-altering thing to be done to me. I prefer to be myself, thank you very much. Though, I would like to see if we could give a potion to Camilla, and have her love both Fendel and Sven. Actually, never mind. That was a terrible idea. Sometimes the danger tendencies in me just think of these really stupid things. You managed to destroy all three keepers? Very impressive. Yes. Please follow me. Keep watch for Dernevere. With the prison's barrier down, he's almost certain to investigate. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I can't say it surprises me. I kind of figured we were heading for this someday. I just didn't know when. If. I've been assuming that's where all this is going. I've been trying to make my peace with it. Come on, we can talk about this another time. Yes, I do. Don't tell anyone else, though. My mother had to leave the island for some urgent business one day, so I snuck into her laboratory. You know, to create some potions, test out some necromancy, fiddle around with things I really wasn't supposed to. But one thing did catch my eye. That brandy. I didn't really consider why she even had it there. I just decided to take a small sip. It truly tasted like something else. So I decided to finish the entire bottle in one swig. I absolutely loved it. I was already a vampire at this point though, so don't worry. I didn't pass out vomit or anything like that. But when my mother did come home though, she was angry, most definitely. She said it costed a premium, and that it was meant to be a token gift to one of the newer members of my father's court. And as a punishment, I got janitorial duties around the castle for the better part of the month. And even as a vampire, to me, that felt like a long time. I think now would be a good time to talk. I wasn't even sure we'd make it out of there in one piece. I know this sounds weird, but while we were back in the Soul Cairn, I was kind of scared that the Ideal Masters would do anything, really. Trap us there, for one. I wouldn't like to be a hostage for eternity. You really are a pile of scrib jelly. The ideal masters are real. Everything I said about the soul cairn was real. There were trapped souls. Weird, floating things. We fought an undead dragon. Everything we saw basically spelled out everything I read about that place. The soul cairn. Realm of oblivion as ruled by the ideal masters. And, of course, you didn't see them. They're called Unseen for a reason. Ugh. Wait. You're just messing with me, aren't you? You. It's not funny. The next time you try to act like this again, I'll be the one to personally soul trap and place you in the soul cairn. 
All right, maybe it is. But I'm still warning you. <sighs> it's been a while since I had such fun like this. Thanks. But there is something I'd like to tell you. And I really feel like now's the time. Do you like me? Not just as a friend, but as something else. I think you know what I mean. Then, hopefully this won't be awkward. Well, a first first. That went much better than I expected. Now that that's out of the way. I feel free for once. The one thing that was used to destroy me. When I did it with you, it was different. I used to see sex as a way to deceive, to take advantage, and most of all, to demonstrate power. But now, I've experienced it can be much more. It's like, all my life, I've only ever seen a facade. Now seeing the real thing breaks all those walls away. Thank you for that. Hey, I'm glad you're here with me. Very well. It's not like anything else in Skyrim, I can tell you that much. From now or before. There's probably groves like this all over Tamriel. Most people just don't even know what to look for. Would you say this to any other girl in Skyrim? I may be out of the loop on the whole romance thing, but that pickup line is just bad. Abysmally bad. Good. I'm glad that's sorted. Kind of got worried for you a bit there. Anyway, I'm glad you're here with me. I couldn't have gone this far without you. I know we have stuff to do. But do you want to, you know, just for a bit, do it here? I'd like to. Also, something for me to check off my bucket list. Make love to the one person in my life, in the most beautiful grove in all of Tamriel. Gods, Shea would come knocking at my door for the amount of cheese in that statement. Then, what are we waiting for? Well... I love you. If you won't mind, I'd like us to relax here for a bit. 
You don't get to see this kind of thing every day. Old stone walls towering over the sea. But a candlelight high up shining brightly. Stained eyes and the waves crash below. Old stone walls deep down in the dark. Long lost hope and secrets sealing my heart. But then you were there. Reaching out your hand And for just a moment I was brought to life again Old stone walls I've seen so many now Tales and stories And the joy of being dragged around Your smile so bright I could go blind But that's okay If you stay by my side Cold dripping leather The smell of rain You fast asleep As I study your face Old stone wall they don't hold me anymore I'm happy where I am In the grip of your arms I think we're good now Let's move Well, if I were a betting woman, I'd say it's a scraper of some sort. Mother had something similar back home when she was tending the courtyard gardens, to scrape moss and fungus off the trees. That one's far nicer, though. Almost ceremonial. Let's move. They seem quite taken to you now that you're carrying some of the tree bark. I guess we should have seen this coming. Moth priest... moths. They're apparently related in some way. Couldn't hurt to gather more, I suppose. Well, unless my vision's playing tricks, there seems to be some sort of magical effect around you. Seems like we're on the right track. Otherwise, I don't have the faintest idea. That's it? All right. Yeah. Come on. We can talk about this another time. All right. Interesting.
Are you okay? I almost thought I lost you there. You went as white as the snow. I could see it in your eyes. You looked about a thousand leagues away. What about Ariel's bow? Do you know where we can find it? Then it's almost over. We can finally put an end to this ridiculous prophecy. Where is this Darkfall cave? Then let's get going. I want to get there before my father has a chance to track us down. If you need some help, I'm ready. Who's there? Stay sharp. Let's keep moving. Not much. If you read any history, it shows up from time to time, but it's a hard thing to track. As far as I know, though, it's never been held by a vampire. That would be a new one. Ariel is one of the elven gods. He's with the rest of them in Aetherius. The way I've heard it, the sun represents the connection from our world to theirs. Supposedly, the bow draws its energy from the sun itself, which is why it shows up in that prophecy. And that part, I don't know. Once we have it, hopefully it'll be obvious. Confident. I've never felt so determined in my entire life. And if we can survive the Soul Cairn, this should be a walk in the park. Unless how far we've come was all because of me while you just followed. I mean, I am a royal vampire, a skilled femme fatale, alchemist, and mage. While you are... Oh, really? Do entertain me. Oh, go on. Well, point's taken. I don't have anything to refute what you're saying. I am a cold bitch, both in temperature and in attitude. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. We got a bow to find. But first...
Don't tell me you didn't want it. I think I remember when I first fell in love with you. I know this sounds incredibly cheesy, but it literally was love at first sight. I couldn't put my finger on it at first. I was just oddly attracted to you for some reason, even if it was just a little bit. But good thing the more I got to know you better, the more my feelings were affirmed. What did you need? By the blood of my ancestors. Incredible. Simply incredible. I can feel some kind of power from it. Leave it to my mother. Always smarter than I gave her credit for. Just you and me against the world now. What now? Do you ever feel lonely? I care about you, a lot. You deserve to be happy. Are you okay? Almost thought I lost you there. Good. Keep strong and eyes open. We're on a different path now. We can finally put an end to this ridiculous prophecy. Yes? What did you need? Well, aren't you the romantic one? Kiss me then. Let's go. As long as we can get this Verther out of the Sanctum, I think they'll be happy to just hand it over. Why? Oh, wow. <sighs> yes, you're right. Sarana, this veil is as beautiful as you are. Pale white snow, like the vampiric skin on your body. Cold to touch. Just as you are. A bit eccentric, but that's why I like you. That kind of thing might not work with a lot of other girls, but it sure does work with me. In a way. Otherwise, I really wouldn't be head over heels for you. And with that, I mean it. Come here, you swit. 
Well, if you need some help, I'm ready. You're smart. What do you think? Come on, let's go. My love cow. It's not as shiny as I was expecting. Still, it's beautiful. I think we both know. It's time to face my father. If we don't, he'll keep chasing us for the rest of our lives. I've been thinking about this for a long time. It's... it's not easy. But I don't think we have much of a choice. No, this has to end here and now. If we head back to the castle and kick the front door in, we're gonna be knee-deep in his friends. Let's head back to Isran and let him see what we've got first. I'm betting he'll lend us a sword or two. What now? It sounds like... That's the last bit of the prophecy. The blood of a daughter of Cold Harbor can corrupt the bow. So I am. I guess we could use my blood. Do you have any arrows? Elven arrows? I'm not going to just bleed on any old thing. Oh. Alright then. I don't think you can ever be ready to kill your parent. I'm doing my best to not think of him as my father anymore. We've got enough to worry about right now. You stay focused, and I'll worry about me. Got it. Yes? Don't. Thank you. Let's go. What is it? Just leave me alone for now. I'll be fine. I see you still favor keeping a pet. You know why we're here. Of course I do. You disappoint me, Serana. You've taken everything I provided for you and thrown it all away for this pathetic being. Provided for me? Are you insane? You've destroyed our family. You've killed other vampires all over some prophecy that we barely understand. No more. I'm done with you. You will not touch her. So, I see this dragon has fangs. Your voice drips with the venom of your mother's influence. How alike you've become. No. Because unlike her, I'm not afraid of you. Not anymore. And you. It appears I have you to thank for turning my daughter against me. I knew it was only a matter of time before she'd return with hatred in her heart. 
A small price to pay for the betterment of our kind. Yes, yes. Always the noble vampire hunter. And what happens when you've slain me? Is Valerica next? Is Serana? Then my daughter is truly lost. She died the moment she accepted a mortal into her life. Yes, quite. I'm growing weary of speaking to you and my traitorous daughter. I'll give you a single chance to turn over the bow to me. There will not be a second. Very well, then. You leave me no choice. You have my back. Uh, uh, ha! 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 Take this. Ready? Here. Let's do this. Good 
night. It's over. He's dead. And the prophecy dies with him. I... I suppose this is difficult for you. I think my father really died a long time ago. This was just... the end of something else. I did what needed to be done. Nothing more. I think perhaps... I think you did more than that. You have my thanks. So, the beast is destroyed. Not only that, but Ariel's bow is in safe hands. The Dawn Guard will now be dedicated to safeguarding it, making sure that prophecy will never come to pass. You've served Skyrim well. Even with these vampires gone, the fight isn't completely over. Once we're settled back in at the fort, there will be more work to do. We'd be honored to have you join us. Hey, I'm glad you're here with me. Well, now that's done. I'm not sure. I'll probably stay with the Dawn Guard for as long as they'll let me. They're respectable fighters, and I think they see the benefits of having a vampire on their side now. Of course, if you've got any more adventures planned... That's what I wanted to hear. Yes? Maybe, but I... I don't know. But what about you? Thank you. Come on. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, it is. Thank you, again, for all you've done for me and the world. I know we haven't known each other for too long, but now you basically are family. Where my father was not. What I said to my mother back in the Soul Cairn, it was all true. You. A stranger have done more for me since we met than either of my parents in more than a thousand years. You are my savior. My sole reason to keep living. I love you. <laughs> wow. By the nine, I really am a crybaby. And don't you dare bring this up again later. You little. It's on. If I were you, maybe not be too surprised if your next tomato soup tastes like Hagraven toes. Hagraven toes.
Really, though, I've come to peace with what's happened with Harkon. Here's a new chapter for me to start, at least. A chapter with you. You should be able to find out soon enough. I know you probably have other stuff you'd like to do. But don't you think it would be nice if we just had some alone time for a while? Let's go somewhere else. Someplace beautiful. Your choice. Okay. Where to? The Ancestor Glade? Anyway, I'll let you take the pick. Do you need something? Well, aren't you the romantic one? Thought you'd never ask. Oh? What is it? Not bad, not bad. You do know how to choose date places, at least. So, what do you want to talk about? But wait. Before you start, I just thought of something. Hear me out on this one. You know Yzolda, that girl in Whiterun? I heard she has this weird thing for mammoth's tusks. What would a girl like her be doing with something like that? Oh no. By the nine. I really don't think you'd want to hear it. And... Oh no. I also heard she likes to collect sleeping tree sap. Sleeping tree sap... Plus Mammoth Tusk, plus Yazolda. <laughs> My brain. Let's just forget I said anything. How could that thing even fit? I know a lot of thoughts are probably buzzing around in your head, so I'll get to the point. Would you like to get married? Just a little something to tie the knot. I might have told you this before, that this kind of thing isn't really for me. And rightfully so, since I've experienced trauma with a particular temple ceremony. But I guess the point is that what I said doesn't mean I don't love or want to be together with you for life. I just wouldn't like it to be that ritualistic. I think here's fine, and it should do the trick. Would you like to marry me? Come here, now and forever. For as long as I'd live, vampire or not, I wouldn't have any regrets. I love you. Interesting place. I hardly see any Nords here, even in their own province. Let's keep moving.
Oh, it's... nothing. It's fine. Still here. I'm glad you're here. You... you really can tell that there is something else. Looks like I can't hide it from you any longer, or else you'll just keep pestering me about it until my soul slivers up to Cold Harbor. But... I don't even know if you'll forgive me after this. I'm really sorry. Do you remember when you first met me back at Dim Hollow Crypt? Did you ever ask yourself why you were so calm when you first saw me? You were a vampire hunter. While you were new to the Order, you still accepted that as your creed. Otherwise, you wouldn't have slayed every single vampire that my father sent. Then, why didn't you kill me? I just looked like any other vampire in that cave. Maybe a bit more attractive, but you get the point. Being a trained vampire hunter, your first instinct would be to draw your blade and attack. You would have slain me then and there, taken the scroll, and fled. But you didn't. You were so calm, because... I casted a calm spell on you. Look, you were the first person I saw after being locked up for thousands of years. And you were armed to the teeth. I wasn't exactly mind-controlling you, but I did mess with your head, deceiving you without your consent. I know I complain about my family, and how I wasn't able to choose my own path and my own decisions. It turns out, though, I'm not that different compared to them. I'm just a hypocrite. I didn't even believe in myself enough, or believe in the trust I talk about. Right I was you. merely a vulnerable girl, doing whatever she could to get what... No, I didn't even want Dang. anything back then. I didn't even know what I was thinking. There were so many thoughts rushing through Still my head, here. and I just... I manipulated you. I really just Thanks. wanted to survive, then and there. I'm sorry. I realize now that our entire relationship must have been built off this entire lie. If you want to leave me now, it's fine. If I were you, I probably would. Why? Why? You... But I'm worthless, selfish. Everything we've done, it was for me. Don't you realize that? I'm truly the lowest of the low. I, I hate myself. What? And what is that exactly? I'm none of those things. I'm... I'm sorry. I allowed everything that's been going on to get the better of me. But what I said is true. I don't think too highly of myself. And... I have done some very bad and selfish things before. I know you don't hold those against me, though. Instead, you choose to stay by my side, choosing to look at my strengths and not my weaknesses. I want to prove to myself that the Serana you see is the Serana I believe I am. 
So, if it's all right with you, would you like to start again? Let's give things a fresh start. From zero. I want to do things better this time. I promise. <laughs> Thank you for everything. You truly do mean a lot to me. And I'd really like our relationship to grow from here on out. <sighs> that, that was good to get off my chest. Come on, let's move. Still here. Sometimes I feel bad for these Falmer. They used to be normal myrrh, but circumstances just drew them to madness. This isn't necessarily the best place for it, but something came to mind. Would you like to have another date? Anytime, but preferably at night, in the Bannered Mayor. Okay, let's do whatever we have to do first, but you know the deal. Date after. Looks like we're here. If you need a drink, just holler. Oh. Yazolda, I didn't me. expect to see you here. For that so, place. you now work at the Bannered Mayor? If it's work you're looking for? I need more experience well, if I'm going to run an inn someday. So I take this as some training then? Well, I'll be glad to be one of your first customers. Thank you. So, what drinks do you have on the menu? Have you tried the wine? It's better than anything in the Blue Palace. Look rather pale. You have wine? I didn't expect that, it's but quite a problem okay. Home in but what do you think? Are you in the I'm mood for ears. something fancy? Or something casual? Oh, I see. Well, you this are with royalty. Therapy. Me, really. Give us your best wine, and put it on my tab. Oh, my treat for tonight. Sure thing. To white run from Cheers. To everything you've done, for me, the and the world. Keep it quiet, will you? Yes. I'd rather not have everyone hear that. Just because I'm a vampire doesn't mean I don't enjoy a good drink from time to time. And hey, I'm a Nord. Drinking is just what we do, really. So, what's on your mind? Again, you with the classic cheese. I think you should be the new Sheo. Did you know that, at least according to the legend, the Sheo Gorath we have now was actually the champion of Cyrodiil? And you might take his place. I could endorse you. <laughs> yes, because that's just what I do. It's fun. Maybe it's the Daedra in me, but being naughty every now and then wouldn't hurt, right? Especially in bed. Hmm, I think you'll have to see for yourself. Now, let me try. Picture this. I lay my eyes on your beautiful and feminine form. I've heard you're an astute adventurer. Could you help me? I'd like to explore this land, but first, your body. Hmm? I guess we both have talent when it comes to this. Yeah, really. I don't think it would work with most girls, but whenever you say those kinds of things to me, I get a little romantic excitement. And I think it might be the same with this you. Is an ode to Skyrim's staunch protectors, the Imperials. Now, we this thousand-year-old vampire relic is beckoning you, mighty warrior. I wonder what she's saying. 
I guess to find out, all you have to do is kiss her. and restore what we own. With our blood and our steel, we will take back our home. I think we're good now. Oh, and I've been meaning to give something to you. trouble in White Run, and I'll hold you. Perhaps you wouldn't mind if I could watch. Yes. Need something? Charming name. I think we're good now. Oh, oh. and I've been meaning to. <sighs> I think we're good now. Oh, and I've been meaning to give something to you. A little... commemoration that we're together now. A little magical necklace I've made recently. Due to my smartness, really, in the arcane arts. When you wear it, you'll get a boost to your magicka, vitality, and stamina. As long as I'm nearby. That's the catch. Nothing else then? Hmm? Hey, even vampires get tired every now and then. Finally, a place to just relax. Don't worry. Oh my. I know. Thank you. Thought you'd never ask. I'm not looking for conversation. Is still a problem if you ask me. Is that? Oh no. Contrary to popular belief, there's actually Do you have any other ideas? I don't think it exactly sits well with me for you to travel alone, on top of a dragon, only to arrive at another ancient burial mound by yourself. Then travel to a realm of Aetherius, defeat Alduin, and somehow come back to the world of the living in one piece. You could die, and... I don't know what I'd ever do without you. You are my one reason to live. You are what keeps me going. And I'm not sure I want to risk that. Just... just don't go. There has to be another way. But they usually have a lot of gold stashed in their camps. I... All right. It... it's not easy. Just watching you go like this and there's nothing I can do <sighs> now go and do this for the world and for myself, me good luck hopefully I'll see you again soon go on now mighty hero save the world My mother was a companion before she married my father. Always told me to stay away from them. Never knew why, but I listened.
You... you're back. I thought you might have been dead, or that something might have happened to you. I thought... What about Alduin? Is he... gone? <sighs> That's great to hear. I'm sorry, I just... I didn't know if you really had it in you. Which is why I was so worried, but it's great to know you've proven me wrong. Welcome back, Dragonborn. Hopefully, there won't be more cataclysmic events in the future that only you can solve. Because whether you like it or not, I'm going to be here to stick around. I won't like it if something like this were to happen again. Not on my watch. I've lived now, in isn't it time for us to get left. going? I'd like to visit Cyrodiil someday, though. My father told me to visit Westwald before the Thalmor fade again. What now? I don't know, honestly. More adventures, I guess? You take the pick. Come on, let's move. Thane. I'm glad we're here together, if you know what I mean. So... Kiss me then. Interesting place. I hardly see any Nords here, even in their own province. Thane. Still here. <laughs> 